Hello, and thank you for joining us to learn more about the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Standard. As many of you are aware, in the summer of 2016, Congress passed an amendment to the Agricultural Marketing Act of 1946. That amendment required the Secretary of Agriculture to draft regulations to establish a national mandatory bioengineered food disclosure standard. A team of dedicated individuals from the Agricultural Marketing Service and other agencies across the USDA have worked diligently over the last two years to draft the final regulations. By providing a uniform, national standard for labeling bioengineered foods, we can increase transparency in our food system and give consumers information about the bioengineered status of their foods. While doing so, we avoid a patchwork of state labeling regulations that could be confusing for consumers and expensive for manufacturers. To get to this point, the team at USDA relied heavily on information and input from stakeholders across the landscape, including producers, food processors, food manufacturers, retailers, and consumers. This included over 112,000 responses to questions AMS posed on its website and more than 14,000 comments after AMS published the proposed rule. Thank you to everybody who provided input. It has been invaluable in designing a standard that provides consumers with the information they are looking for while giving those subject to the standard necessary guidance and, where appropriate, added flexibility. This presentation is designed for food labeling and compliance professionals and will explain the requirements of the standard, including who is responsible for labeling, what must be labeled, how it must be labeled, and other important administrative items such as compliance dates, record-keeping requirements, and how the law will be enforced. The regulations published in December 2018 are the final regulations to implement the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Standard as directed by Congress. The regulations described in this presentation are what must be implemented to comply with the law. We begin with who is responsible for labeling bioengineered foods. The standard identifies three different groups as regulated entities. These regulated entities are responsible for complying with the standard. The first type of regulated entity is a food manufacturer, which includes anyone who packages food for human consumption and retail sale. The second type of regulated entity is an importer. Importers are defined by U.S. Customs and Border Protection and include anyone who imports food for retail sale into the United States. This includes those who import raw agricultural products and processed foods. The third and final category of regulated entity is retailers who either, one, package and label food for retail sale, or two, sell bulk food items. Example of a retailer who is responsible for bioengineered food labeling include a grocery store that sells bulk items like fresh fruits and vegetables or processed bulk items like granola and cereal. It may also include grocery stores with a deli or bakery depending on what items they sell. The standard exempts certain types of businesses from having to comply with the regulations. These include restaurants and similar retail food establishments and very small food manufacturers. A restaurant or similar retail food establishment includes full-service and fast-food restaurants, cafeterias, lunchrooms, food stands, food trucks, trains and airplanes, bars, taverns, and lounges. It also includes ready-to-eat foods sold in a grocery store deli, salad bar, or hot bar. Very small food manufacturers are also not required to comply with the standard, although they may voluntarily comply if they choose so. Very small food manufacturers are defined as those with annual receipts less than $2.5 million. This amount is determined by including both food and non-food receipts. So those who must comply with the standard include food manufacturers, importers, 
and retailers who package and label food or sell bulk food items. Those who are not required to comply with the standard include restaurants and similar retail food establishments and very small food manufacturers. We now move to what foods are considered bioengineered foods and are therefore subject to the standard. First and foremost, the standard does not apply to foods that are primarily meat, catfish, poultry, or egg products. To figure out if a food is primarily meat, catfish, poultry, or an egg product, look at the first ingredient on the ingredient list. If that first ingredient would individually be subject to the Federal Meat Inspection Act, the Poultry Products Inspection Act, or the Egg Products Inspection Act, then the food is not subject to the standard. This means that foods where the first ingredient is pork, beef, sheep, goat, or catfish, chicken, turkey, or another domesticated bird, or an egg product, are not subject to the standard. This does not include foods where the first ingredient is fish other than catfish or wild game. Fish other than catfish and wild game are not subject to one of these three acts. If the first ingredient is not individually subject to the Federal Meat Inspection Act, the Poultry Products Inspection Act, or the Egg Products Inspection Act, but that first ingredient is broth, stock, water, or a similar solution, then look to the second ingredient. When the first ingredient is broth, stock, water, or a similar solution, and the second ingredient is subject to one of those three acts, meaning the second ingredient is pork, beef, sheep, goat, or catfish, chicken, turkey, or another domesticated bird, or an egg product, then the food is not subject to the standard. Example 1. Pork, salt, water, modified food starch, sugar. Example 2. Vegetable broth, potatoes, chicken, peas, carrots, corn, modified food starch, chicken fat, soybean oil. Example 3. Vegetable broth, turkey, egg noodles, water, corn, peas, carrots, salt, soybean oil. Example 4. Freeze-dried egg, freeze-dried egg yolk, non-fat dry milk, cornstarch, salt, smoke flavor, xanthan gum. Since this first step in determining what foods are bioengineered foods can be a little complex, we have several examples. In the first example, we look at the first ingredient. In this case, that's pork. Since pork is a meat that is covered by the Federal Meat Inspection Act, this first product is not a bioengineered food. Even if one of the ingredients further down the list were, on its own, a bioengineered food, this particular product is not a bioengineered food and should not be disclosed. In the second example, we again look at the first ingredient. Here, the first ingredient is vegetable broth. Vegetable broth is not covered by the Federal Meat Inspection Act, the Poultry Products Inspection Act, or the Egg Products Inspection Act. However, since the first ingredient is broth, stock, water, or a similar solution, we need to look at the second ingredient. Here, the second ingredient is potatoes. Potatoes, like vegetable broth, are not covered by the Federal Meat Inspection Act, the Poultry Products Inspection Act, or the Egg Products Inspection Act. Because of this, the second example is not primarily a meat, catfish, poultry, or egg product. If any of the remaining ingredients, such as corn, are bioengineered, then the analysis regarding disclosure would continue. This second example may be a bioengineered food such that it would require disclosure. In the third example, we again start with the first ingredient. The first ingredient is broth, so we look at the second ingredient. Here, the second ingredient is turkey, which is covered by the Poultry Products Inspection Act. Because the first ingredient is broth and the second ingredient is a poultry product, this product is not subject to the standard and cannot be disclosed as a bioengineered food. 
In the fourth example, the first ingredient is freeze-dried egg. Because freeze-dried egg is covered by the Egg Products Inspection Act, this fourth example is not a bioengineered food, regardless of whether any of the remaining ingredients would, on their own, be considered a bioengineered food. Now we move to the crux of the definition of a bioengineered food. Each of the ideas on this slide will be discussed in greater detail in the following slides. Bioengineered foods are those that contain detectable genetic material that has been modified through in vitro rDNA techniques and for which the modification could not otherwise be obtained through conventional breeding or found in nature. Foods that do not contain detectable modified genetic material are not bioengineered foods. The definition also allows for certain factors and conditions that may cause a food to not be considered a bioengineered food, which at this time includes incidental additives. We'll discuss more about each of these ideas in the following slides. The first part of the definition of bioengineered food includes the phrases found in nature and conventional breeding. Modifications that could be found in nature or obtained through conventional breeding are not considered bioengineered foods. USDA has not defined either of these terms and will make determinations about whether a specific modification would be considered found in nature or obtained through conventional breeding on a case-by-case -case basis. AMS recognizes that the definition of bioengineered foods is complex and figuring out what foods contain detectable genetic material that has been modified through in vitro rDNA techniques may be difficult for many individuals responsible for food labeling. Recognizing this complexity, AMS created this list of bioengineered foods to help regulated entities determine if their food is bioengineered. This list includes all bioengineered foods that are legally produced and authorized for commercial production somewhere in the world. Where feasible, AMS has included the specific variety of a crop or food to make compliance and record keeping easier. Where only one company is making a bioengineered version of a food, AMS has included the trade name on the list. This list will be reviewed on an annual basis and, if necessary, updated through notice and comment rulemaking. Foods on or ingredients made from foods on this list must be disclosed as a bioengineered food if the records show that the food is bioengineered or does not indicate the bioengineered status of the food. If the regulated entity's records show that the food is not bioengineered, then its label will not include a bioengineered food disclosure. Records appropriate to show a food on this list is not bioengineered will be discussed shortly. For foods on this list that include a variety or trade name, disclosure is required when the regulated entity's records include that variety or trade name. If the records do not show the food is that specific variety or trade name, then disclosure is not required unless the regulated entity has actual knowledge that the food is bioengineered. For instance, if I'm a retailer selling apples and my records do not show that the apples are Arctic apples, I do not need to make a disclosure unless I have actual knowledge that my apples are bioengineered. AMS recognizes that while this list captures all crops and animals that are legally produced and authorized for commercial production somewhere in the world, there may be other products produced in labs or controlled environments and new crops that could enter commerce before AMS updates this list. If a regulated entity is using a food that is not on this list and their records show they have actual knowledge that the food they are using is a bioengineered food, then they must make a bioengineered food disclosure. If you're using a food that is on the list of bioengineered foods or a food or ingredient produced from a food on the list and you do not believe it is a bioengineered food, there are several types of records that will show that it does not contain detectable modified genetic material and therefore that food or ingredient is not a bioengineered food. We'll discuss each of the following in further detail in the next several slides, 
But the three options to show that modified genetic material is not detectable and therefore your food or ingredient is not bioengineered are to maintain records that one, verify the food is made from a non-bioengineered food. Two, verify the food has been refined using a process validated to render the modified genetic material undetectable. Or three, verify the absence of detectable modified genetic material through testing of the specific food. First, you can maintain records that verify the food is made from a non-bioengineered food. These types of records may include organic certification, records that show that the food is sourced from an area that does not allow production of that food in a bioengineered form, or any other records that communicate similar information. Second, for highly refined foods that are produced using a food on the list but do not contain detectable modified genetic material, you can maintain records that verify the food has been refined using a process validated to render the genetic material undetectable. Validation is confirmed through testing and through maintenance of processing records. For validation, AMS does not identify which specific tests must be used, but does prescribe standards of performance regarding testing methodology. In general, the laboratory that does the testing is expected to use quality assurance protocols that are common to the industry to ensure the validity and reliability of the test results. Once a refining process has been validated through testing and records that show modified genetic material is not detected, and records are maintained that show the validated process is followed, the process does not need to be tested again unless significant changes are made to the process. Third, you can show that modified genetic material is not detectable by maintaining testing records for specific foods that confirm no modified genetic material is detectable. As with the validated refining process, AMS is not identifying specific tests that must be used, but has prescribed standards of performance regarding testing methodology. In general, the laboratory that does the testing is expected to use quality assurance protocols that are common to the industry to ensure the validity and reliability of test results. The definition of bioengineered food also excludes foods subject to certain factors or conditions. The standard currently includes one factor or condition, which is incidental additives. Incidental additives are defined by the Food and Drug Administration, but generally are foods that are used in insignificant amounts and have no technical or functional effect. When used in accordance with FDA regulations, Incidental additives do not need to be included on the ingredient list. Similarly, AMS has determined that incidental additives are not bioengineered foods and when used in conformance with the FDA regulations, do not by themselves require a bioengineered food disclosure. The standard includes three categories of foods that are exempt. One, those that fall under a certain threshold amount. Two, those that are from an animal fed bioengineered feed, and three, those certified under the National Organic Program. The threshold exemption allows a certain amount of bioengineered substance in a food without requiring a bioengineered food disclosure. The standard allows each ingredient to contain up to 5% of a bioengineered substance, so long as it is inadvertent or technically unavoidable. Any intentional use of a bioengineered food or ingredient requires disclosure. This exemption is intended to acknowledge the realities of the supply chain and recognizes that bioengineered and non-bioengineered foods may be grown and processed near one another. Although individuals throughout the supply chain routinely take steps to keep bioengineered and non-bioengineered foods separate, the threshold exemption ensures that when appropriate steps are taken to keep bioengineered and non-bioengineered foods separate, a non-bioengineered food will not require disclosure simply because it was grown or processed near its bioengineered counterpart. In order for the presence of a bioengineered substance to be considered inadvertent 
or technically unavoidable, the regulated entity must use reasonable and customary practices to separate bioengineered and non-bioengineered ingredients. A small amount of bioengineered corn that remained in a combine or on a processing line after reasonable efforts to remove all bioengineered corn would be considered inadvertent or technically unavoidable if present in an amount less than 5%. Conversely, if a food manufacturer was producing a non-bioengineered cracker and ran out of one non-bioengineered ingredient, then decided to use a bioengineered version of that ingredient, that would be considered an intentional use and would require a bioengineered food disclosure. The second exemption is for foods that come from an animal. Food derived from an animal that is fed bioengineered feed does not require disclosure as a result of that animal being fed bioengineered feed. For example, eggs are not considered a bioengineered food just because a chicken was fed a mix of bioengineered grains. Similarly, milk from a cow fed bioengineered alfalfa is not a bioengineered food as a result of the cow eating bioengineered feed. Conversely, if a bioengineered animal, such as salmon, is fed a bioengineered feed, disclosure would be required because the animal is bioengineered, but not because of what it was fed. The last exemption is for organic foods. Foods and ingredients that are certified under the National Organic Program do not require disclosure. Now that we know what foods require disclosure, we move to how that disclosure is made. The disclosure can be made in one of two different locations. If there is not enough space in one of those two places, then a third option allows additional flexibility. First, the disclosure can be made on the information panel next to the manufacturer and distributor information. If the disclosure is made here, it should not intervene in any other disclosures required by the Food and Drug Administration or the USDA Food Safety and Inspection Service. Second, the disclosure can be made on the principal display panel. The principal display panel is typically the panel that is most likely to be displayed, presented, or shown when the food is being sold in a retail setting. Last, if there is not enough space on the information panel or the principal display panel for the disclosure, it may be made on any alternate panel that is likely to be seen by the consumer under ordinary shopping conditions. There are four different options available to all regulated entities for packages of any size. Those four are on-package text, symbol, electronic or digital disclosure, or a text message. Small food manufacturers, which are those with annual receipts between 2.5 million and 10 million, may use any of the four options already mentioned, but can also make the disclosure using a telephone number or website. The disclosure options for small packages include those already mentioned, as well as a shortened statement for electronic or digital text message and phone number disclosures. Last, very small packages may use an existing URL or telephone number. Each of these options are discussed in further detail in the next several slides. For on-package text disclosure, there are several phrases that may be used. If the food is a raw agricultural commodity or a processed food that contains only bioengineered ingredients, the on-package text should say bioengineered food. If the food is a multi-ingredient food that includes a bioengineered ingredient and non-bioengineered ingredients, the on-package text should say, contains a bioengineered food ingredient, or if multiple bioengineered ingredients are present, contains bioengineered food ingredients. For symbol disclosure, this symbol must be used. The symbol can be printed in color or in black and white. The electronic or digital disclosure includes on-package text that notifies the consumer of how to access the disclosure, as well as requirements for the disclosure on the electronic or digital device. The text on the package must include the statement, scan here for more food information, or similar language that reflects changes in technology. A similar statement would be, scan anywhere on package for more food information, if the technology being used allow the consumer to access the electronic or digital disclosure by doing so. 
When a consumer completes the directions on the package, such as scanning, on their electronic or digital device, the first thing to appear on the electronic or digital link must be the product information page. This first page, the product information page, must include the bioengineered food disclosure using either the same language allowed for unpackaged text disclosures or the symbol. When used, the electronic or digital link disclosure cannot collect information about the consumer or their devices. In addition to the unpackaged statement that tells the consumer how to access the electronic or digital disclosure, the package must also include, in close proximity to the first statement, a second statement that says, call for more food information. The phone number must provide the bioengineered food disclosure to consumers regardless of the time of day and can be made using a recording. The fourth and final option available to all regulated entities is a text message disclosure. Similar to the electronic or digital disclosure, the text message disclosure must include an unpackaged statement that tells consumers how to access the disclosure. That statement must be text, command word, to the phone number for bioengineered food information. The number on the package must be a number, including a short code, that sends an immediate response with the disclosure to the consumer's mobile device. The disclosure that appears on the consumer's mobile device must be made using the same phrases allowed for unpackaged text disclosure, which includes bioengineered food or contains a bioengineered food ingredient. The standard gives small food manufacturers, which are those entities with between 2.5 million and 10 million in annual receipts, additional flexibility by providing two more disclosure options in addition to the four previously discussed. The first additional disclosure option is to include the statement, call for more food information, along with a phone number that will provide the disclosure to the consumer at any time of day. The second additional disclosure option is to use the statement, visit, enter website address, for more food information. If this option is used, the same requirements for electronic or digital disclosure apply. The standard defines small packages as those with less than 40 square inches and provides additional flexibility since there is limited space on the package. When using the electronic or digital disclosure, the text message disclosure or the phone disclosure for small manufacturers, the required unpackaged statements may be shortened to scan for info, text for info, or call for info. Other than these modifications for the text that appears on the package, the requirements for each disclosure option remains the same. The standard defines very small food packages as those with less than 12 square inches and allows the disclosure to be made using a pre-existing website or phone number. When a pre-existing website or phone number is used, the disclosure on the website or over the phone must be made according to the requirements of an unpackaged text or symbol disclosure. The standard also applies to foods sold in bulk containers, which includes, among other things, raw agricultural products. Retailers who sell bulk products are responsible for ensuring that proper disclosures are made using any of the four standard options available to all regulated entities, including text, symbol, electronic or digital, and text message disclosures. Regardless of which disclosure option is used, the disclosure must be made on signage or other materials on or near the bulk food items in a way that is accessible to consumers. The standard allows for two different types of voluntary disclosure. First, entities that are exempt, such as very small food manufacturers and restaurants, may voluntarily make bioengineered food disclosures. Second, regulated entities may make voluntary disclosures for foods that are derived from foods produced through bioengineering but do not contain detectable modified genetic material. The requirements for both types of disclosure are different and explained further on the following slides. Entities that are otherwise exempt from the disclosure requirements may voluntarily disclose using any of the disclosure options available to regulated entities. 
This is available to very small food manufacturers as well as restaurants and similar retail food establishments. The second type of voluntary disclosure is only available for foods that are derived from foods produced using bioengineering, but do not contain detectable modified genetic material. Examples may include highly refined ingredients like sugar derived from a sugar beet or soybean oil derived from soybeans. This type of voluntary disclosure is not allowed for any other foods or ingredients. Things that cannot be voluntarily disclosed include foods derived from an animal-fed bioengineered feed, foods where the first ingredient is meat and incidental additives. Voluntary disclosure for highly refined ingredients must be made using this symbol or the text derived from bioengineering or ingredients derived from a bioengineered source. Now that we know how disclosures are made, we move to what types of records must be kept to demonstrate compliance with the standard. The disclosure provisions of the standard are driven by record keeping. When a regulated entity uses a food on the list of bioengineered foods and decides not to make a bioengineered food disclosure, the records must verify that the food is not bioengineered or does not contain detectable modified genetic material. When a regulated entity makes a disclosure of foods on the list, records would simply identify the food. All entities subject to the standard must keep sufficient records to show they are in compliance with the disclosure requirement. AMS is not proposing that regulated entities keep any new records or forms and is only requiring that regulated entities keep customary and reasonable records generated in the normal course of business. It is up to each regulated entity to determine which records to maintain to demonstrate they are in compliance. These records can be kept in any format, including hard copy or electronic copy, and may be stored at any business location. Although each regulated entity must determine what records they want to keep in order to show they are in compliance with the standard, here are examples of records that AMS believes may be useful in showing compliance. Invoices, bills of lading, inventory records, supply chain records, country of origin records, process verifications, organic certifications, and laboratory test results. There are several additional record-keeping requirements worth noting. The standard requires records to be maintained for two years after the food is sold or distributed for retail sale. Some records, such as those validating certain manufacturing processes or testing, may be necessary to retain for longer periods. When USDA requests records, those records need to be produced within five business days unless USDA grants an extension. If on-site access is necessary, USDA will provide notice at least three business days in advance. Our last topic is enforcement. How will AMS enforce the standard? Failure to make a bioengineered food disclosure as required by the standard is prohibited. Enforcement of the standard is complaint-driven and compliance is based on records. USDA does not intend to test individual foods or ingredients to ensure they are properly labeled. When AMS receives a complaint, it will determine if a further investigation is warranted. If necessary, AMS will conduct an audit of the regulated entity's records and notify the entity of its findings. A regulated entity will be able to appeal the results of an audit or investigation. Following an appeals hearing, AMS will notify the regulated entity of its final determination in the matter. A summary of the results of the audit or investigation will then be posted to the AMS website. The implementation date is the date when regulated entities should prepare to fully comply with the standard. The compliance date, January 1, 2022, is the date when all bioengineered foods entering the stream of commerce must be labeled in compliance with the standard. Regulated entities may voluntarily comply before that time,
and may continue to use labels that were in compliance with state laws that are now preempted. Thank you for taking time to learn about the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Standard. If you have any questions, you can find additional information on the website or send us an email at beefeatfooddisclosure at ams.usda.gov.